So Jonathan, tell me about the, the long-horned cattle that were gene edited and it came, there was an article that came out and these cattle were supposed to be like the poster child of gene editing, proving to the world that we could edit animals safely, cleanly, predictably, and without any government interference. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Yeah, so this was the argument that was made. So uh, these cattle have been made by a company called Recombinetics. They have no horns. There were two different calves that were born uh, from this uh, gene editing event. So they did uh, two separate events and they've been using these cattle as a kind of propaganda vehicle for the idea that gene editing is entirely precise and uh, the companies know what they're doing basically, which is part of the precision narrative. And so, you know, in, in, there's a magazine called uh, Nature Biotechnology in which, which people- Which is incredibly pro-biotech. In fact, they, they have been caught red-handed pushing a a false agenda at times, but we'll talk about it. Yeah, time. yeah, we could. But uh, what's interesting about that magazine is very influential, is that this is where they published their research claiming that these cows were totally precisely edited, and then they published an editorial. So people associated with the companies put their publication together with an editorial, basically saying FDA should back off, there shouldn't be any regulation of gene edited crops because they've been made to be basically no different from normal ones. So, so the company is basically arguing that when they put in this gene edited machinery into the cell, that it will cut at exactly the pr space the place in the genome where they predicted it well, and only that place, and then the cell will basically do an, an edit of its own and introduce the DNA sequence that was supplied by recombinetics, right? So this is the hornless trait. So it's a trait that comes from other varieties of cows. The interesting news is that two years after recombinetics produced these animals, on the 28th of July this year. 2019. Yeah. Uh, FDA published a paper in which they essentially, uh, their claim is uh, basically on a Friday afternoon experiment they decided to have a look at these recombinetics cattle and what's really in the genome of these animals and lo and behold they find these bacterial genes, two different genes in, in each of the cows. So there are two cows independently gene edited, both of them have antibiotic resistance genes in them. Here, let me, let me put this into perspective. The quotes from Nature Biotechnology are like, this, these hornless cattle prove that we can do this cleanly and there should be no oversight by the FDA. And so the FDA decides for some reason to actually do a sequence of the DNA of these same hornless cattle and went, oops, you got it completely wrong, guys. You have antibiotic resistant marker genes and entire sections of the bacteria that you used to genetically engineer these cattle stuck inside the genome of these cattle in every cell. Now, not only does this prove that the technology is imprecise and that a bunch of other stuff can get in there, but the other stuff turns out to be dangerous. So what could go wrong, Jonathan, with antibiotic resistant genes yeah. in the, every cell of the cattle? Yeah. So these, the antibiotics in question are neomycin and canamycin. And you don't, do not want to be eating animals that, whose every single cell contains several different antibiotic resistance genes as a steak or a burger or whatever that then can get into your gut bacteria and cause those to become antibiotic resistance or just get into the general environment. Like those cows will be uh, pooping into the lagoons or onto fields and those fields will basically then become covered in antibiotic resistance genes so they can get into the soil, they can get into the waterways, they can get everywhere. Basically the whole, basically at that point the whole cow production system is creating antibiotic resistance genes. 